Uh, is everything rolling, Mike? We're good. All right, so Netflix has the sec- season two of Making a Murder. You finished the whole season. I right? finished the whole you, thing. You I, bi- I binged watched it. it. I binged it. I'm only three episodes in. I'm... I'm still convinced. I mean, this is an unbiased opinion, obviously, on the show, but I'm convinced that he's innocent. Both of them, Brendan Dassey, and I'm Did still you, convinced Stephen Avery. After, after the first season, weren't you thinking Stephen Avery was still a little guilty? I was still thinking, like, oh, he could be guilty, but Brendan Dassey, I believe, is innocent the whole time. Yeah, I, I think I, they, there's no they way. forced that confession on him no matter what. So I'm in, I think it's episode three, right, when they revealed that federal judge, spoiler alert, <laughs> If you haven't watched any of the the se- if you haven't watched season two yet, so episode three is I literally just finished watching it before I came here, was uh, where they uh, that federal judge yep. overturned his confession, mm-hmm. basically saying they either have to give him a retrial, yep. let him out of uh, uh, prison, or appeal that federal judge. Boy, you're in for a rude uh, awakening with the rest of the season. Okay, I know, <laughs> but um, they uh, they basically said. I, I mean, I've seen on the news he doesn't get out. They appeal right. it, and he doesn't get out. Like I know that much. Spoiler of, alert! <laughs> no, that that was revealed on the news. No, no, for sure. But he, maybe even some people watch this don't even know that he didn't. That he, yeah, he doesn't yeah. get out. But right. uh, I think it's crazy how much in depth uh, Stephen Avery's uh, lawyers. Oh, Kathleen with. Zellner. Yeah, where she bought a Rav Four. Yep. Tried recreating the blood splatters, like everything. She's getting so detailed, like. Why didn't his first attorneys do that? The thing is, and you know what? A lot of people are saying that now, like, oh, why didn't his first attorneys do this? True. Dude, this was in 2005. The technology from no, 2018. They, they, they charged him in 2007. So, I mean, all right, two more happened. years. Sorry, I was yeah. off by two years. They charged him hey, in man, 2007. That's the iPhone came out. It was in 2007. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> but dude, the forensic technology was nowhere near as advanced as it is today. I don't think they could. Now, could they have bought a RAV4? Yeah, they could have bought a RAV4. And hired this forensic stuff and whatnot. But Stephen Avery, how much did his attorneys cost him the last time? $138,000? Yeah, he paid like everything he made from that last Yeah, like it was like $138,000 for that last one. Kathleen Zellner is taking this case for free. Why is she taking the case for free? She's all over Netflix. Netflix, right? exactly. I, I don't care what anybody says, oh, she's doing it to get him out. No, no she's she, getting no, Netflix notoriety. I, th- I think she is, though, partly, just because that's what she does, is like to free, you know, wrongfully wrongfully. Yeah, but she charges people. people for that. I... I I don't think she charges all. You see, people. you did see in the first episode after they introduced her with the first guy that like passed away in jail, and she had to hold on to his confessions until he passed away. Oh yeah, and it was like one of the hardest things she said she ever had to do because she had to confess to all twenty of his murders. Like she had to wait till he passed away, and she held on to it for four years, like saying, "Oh, who he can, who he killed and what." I mean, that is a huge thing to hold on to your shoulders, yeah. like. Damn, right. my client just told me every single person he's killed and where he exactly killed him, and I can't say it until he passes away. And that was like four years. Uh, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, that's why I'm not a lawyer. And that's but that's why she said she. Oh no, she, she are, changed her career yeah. path to get people that are wrongfully uh, convicted. convicted out. Yeah, it's like uh, I like the one line she gives. She's like, "Cause she, they give him that like crazy lie detector test where they like, uh, oh yeah, analyze his brain and everything." Yeah. And uh, she basically says, like, if you don't pass this, we're going to have some serious problems. Oh, yeah. She said she because she said it. She's like, when I tell these people I'm taking their case, they better be not guilty because I will find out if they are guilty. Yeah. And so, she and that's the thing. She's one of those people that doesn't give a shit. She'll I, just I don't, make it happen. I don't know. I haven't watched all of them. So I'm going to guess that, like, how in-depth she's going. I mean, maybe she does find these guilty later in the episodes. I don't know. I haven't watched it. I feel like that would have been spoiled already somewhere on the internet. But, uh I think she would have already dropped out by like episode three by the amount of digging that like the one episode I seen three, she had a whole like legal team. They're sitting there like the special is about the, the, the burn body victims, like how they, they really can't burn a body in a fire like that. Like it, like that fire would have to be going like day and night to actually get those bones down. So those little chars, like a normal campfire would not burn those bones in that amount of time. I really like, can't believe I'm sitting here talking to you about this. Cause I'm like sitting here like, God, there's so much more shit. Yeah, you I don't know. even know yet have, that you have to find out. I have so many shows to watch already. I have to catch up on Ozark. I got to catch up. Uh, I watched a few episodes of that. Uh, what is that? House, uh, Haunted Hill House or whatever. Right. I watched a few episodes of that. I did actually start watching that one. It was okay. Dude, like, I have so much stuff to, like, watch. And then there's movies that I've been watching now, too. All right. So, spoiler word, I'm making a murder, and I'm going to spoil you here, but it's not that big of a spoiler. So, they sent the search. Did you? 
I don't think it's episode three where they sent the search dogs around or anything. Yeah, like no, that. that is. Oh, okay. So the quarry is owned by Manitowoc. Yo, oh, yeah, yeah. The, the one quarry part is right next to his property. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that's why I was like, they didn't say that in the first season at all. No, his, no. The defense then, team didn't even mention and then how or the, how no, the, his defense. Oh, how the owner of the quarry was like, oh, he burned the bodies. Like, just blatantly came up with like, oh yeah, the bodies were or like, oh, it's Stephen Avery burned the body. He just. Assume like he knew he had a fire on his property, and all of a sudden he was burning a body. Right. Like he, that was his direct statement. Not yep. like he went and then, investigated well, did or nothing. You, I don't. Again, episode three. I don't remember how these episodes are, but did you see where she went to his place and they drove in the car with him? Oh, I don't know. That, all right, that wasn't there yet. So, yeah. in one of the episodes, spoiler alert. They actually go meet the guy that lives next door in the quarry. Yeah, in the quarry that the, owns that quarry. He agrees to a meeting as long as his attorney's there. He answered everything truthfully right there. This is what I saw here. I'm not oh, gonna tell you, but yeah. this is what I saw here. Here they said here. there's the the one thing. A lot of people in that town are used to um they're excuse me, big deer hunters, mm-hmm. and they said like they're there. It's a normal practice for them to burn like the the carcass left over. Yeah, so you the can deer get the hunting. head and whatnot. Yeah, they they said that's a normal practice yep. there. So all those people are are very skilled at burning those real hot fires and they actually burn them in the uh like those barrels opposed right. to like a campfire style which they said they had on Stephen avery's property was like a campfire like a big giant campfire but actually how they do it is they burn them in those barrels right so the one thing watching this and i think you'll feel for it too i feel bad for the avery family like the mom the dad like their business has gone downhill see, see i did at first a little bit but now this is season two. They better got themselves an agent. They better be getting a little bit of stipend off these Netflix royalties or something. Like they should be doing okay for Yeah, themselves. but you didn't did you see I know it's one of the first few episodes where like they're having to junk so many of their cars to just stay afloat and yeah, shit like that. I would imagine if somebody starts them a GoFundMe, people have made donations. They should be able to get something back from Netflix. Did you see the people that are sending him shit in the mail? Oh, yeah. All those people I was like the, the quilts. quilts and the photo albums and someone bought Brendan a TV when he gets out of jail. Yeah. I was like, dude, like this is insane. Dude, the, the one. So in episode three, when they're talking to Brendan on the phone, they're like, oh, you know, what do you want to have for dinner on your first? Oh, day he's out? like, I just want fries. Yeah. Like he just. He, I mean, he sounded so happy to get yeah, out. Yeah, like I feel so bad. Like he's like an adult now. He's probably like in his. He's uh, he's close now. to. No, yeah. he's. I think he's like twenty eight. Yeah. So I'm like, man, he's just so simple minded. Where he's just like, yeah, maybe a burger and some French fries. I haven't had fries in a while. Like just listen to him talk. Still, I'm like, how the hell do they? And like he's not. He won't be eligible for parole till they said till 2048. When he was fifty six. Yeah. And then one of the crazy thing is too is because they show like. This is right after they said, making a murderer, making a murderer, doing all these headlines and whatnot. And then oh, they're yeah. getting all these letters. And he's like, I got like 45 letters this week, mom. Yeah. Like he was so excited for all the support. I was like, this kid's totally fucking innocent. Yeah, like, there's no way he is not innocent. Like there's no, not, oh, I mean, that there's, means yeah, yeah, there's no way that he's guilty. Yeah. There's absolutely no way that this kid is guilty. Yeah. In my opinion. I mean, sound off in the comments below what you think if you watch the season, but I think Brendan is not guilty. And it, it, you know what just pisses me off? It just shows me how corrupt the state of Wisconsin is in general. Huh? He's 29. All right. Oh, we were just told he's 29. 29. Yeah. As I said, he's almost 30. He won't yeah. be able to get out to like another when he's like 56. Right. So like another 20 something years. Right. But it just shows me how corrupt the state of Wisconsin is. So, you and I have been in Manitowoc, yeah, actually. Yeah, we did. You and we actually, went to the I, Adam and I did a monster truck show at a racetrack and Manitowoc County yeah. and whatnot. And it's like, dude, like. Imagine if the cops are literally I'm this talking, corrupt. It, so remember we were drinking at the bar there, right? Yeah. And we were talking to some of the people. And when I first got there, I'm like, oh, this is Manitowoc County. I'm thinking like, is anybody? And this was a year or two ago, right? It was yeah. when Making a Murderer like, had its big rise. And it was kind of starting to dumb, die down a bit. We we're drinking at that bar. And I remember I'm like, man, like, is anybody going to bring this up? Like, I feel like. You it, brought it up to somebody that no, night, No, somebody brought it up to me. Because oh. like, oh, is this your first time in Manitowoc County? I'm like, matter of fact, it is. Like, do you know what we're famous for? I'm like, no, please <laughs> tell me. <laughs> And then that's when I was like, yeah, I've seen the series and everything. Like, I didn't want to be like, hey, so are you guys making murderers around here? Like, I'm just not going to walk into the bar and say that. Oh, that'd be fucking hilarious if you said that. But I'm pretty sure Stephen Avery has, like, probably been to that racetrack area. Probably. The one guy said, he's like, yeah, the racetrack's right up, or their property's right up the road. Well, it's funny. When I remember talking to the owner of the racetrack there, I said, where'd you get the junk cars from? <laughs> and they were like, oh, no, no. no. Yes, I did. Say- Hang on. Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. Let me finish. And they said, oh, we got it from... 
this uh, this other Avery place. No, 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 no. They got it from this other place, and then they said we contacted Avery's Auto Salvage, but they didn't want to give us any. Yeah, and I was like, wow, the, they actually they're contacted the, them. They're in the middle of like a uh, you know fighting off reporters and Netflix. So that family should have been doing okay. I don't know how Netflix, whoever made the documentary and pitched it to Netflix, and then if like they whatever contracts or agreements they signed, probably on season one they probably got dirt like you know because they have no idea if the show is going to take off or be a hit season two if they were smart which they probably got a ton of lawyers already could have kind of negotiated a deal like hey we're going to need a little bit more compensation for us expose or maybe they could be doing it all for free just like they really just want to get Stephen avery out of jail they They, don't want any money for the show they just want their son out of jail i mean now the producers of this show, those two females that like filmed it and edited and documented and everything. How much do you think they're getting off this series from Netflix? I don't know how Netflix deals work, but because um, they're literally they were nobody. They were nobody as filmmakers. Yeah. Until this series came out, and, and now they are. Like, they've been on Good Morning America. Oh, yeah. They've they been on NBC show Today and or hit documentary series like that. It's going to take off. So here, here, here's another thing too. It's like. You go on Netflix or Amazon Prime, Hulu or whatever, and there's all these documentaries about yeah. victims like Stephen Avery. Why is this one so special that it took off compared to I the mean, others? I mean, it just has that like catching lightning in a bottle. It was like they had the the whole the whole character behind it. You got these weird Wisconsin type people that are like looking like they're from the 80s, but it's really 2000. He just called you people in Wisconsin weird. Yeah, I did. The mouth breathers, Green Bay Packer fans. Yeah, I called it. We're from Chicago. Okay. No, I mean, no, just all kidding aside. But I think it's just it was that perfect little storm of how the story was unfolded and, and how they presented their story and the facts that kind of caught people's attention. Like, holy shit, this guy is probably innocent. But right. He really goes to jail. So do you think Stephen or Brendan get out? I would hope Brendan gets out. Stephen, I think, is going to have a tougher battle. But actually, the, I haven't Zellner. finished it. Yeah. I, I'm only three episodes in. You finished it, so I really don't want you to spoil it. But no, I I'm mean, not, I'm if not, he was out already, it would have been all, re- all over It would have been all over the news. Right. Like when Brendan came out, I text, I think yeah. I texted you that day when they, his original release. <coughs> Salut. Jesus, <coughs> God bless you. You good? Yeah. All right. But like when... Brendan originally got like when it was went all over the internet. I text you, I was like, dude, holy shit, he's gonna get yeah, out. Yeah, I know, yeah. And then he obviously didn't get out and whatnot. Um, so I think Steven's gonna have a harder time. Brendan, Brendan's attorneys are awesome too. Do you hear the one thing, uh, which I didn't, they didn't talk about this in season one, or maybe I missed it, but they said if Brendan would have testified against Stephen Avery, like he was forced into doing this stuff, he would have got a much weaker sentence. Oh, for sure. Yeah, definitely. They I'm said like, that. Man, they didn't say that, that in the kid, first season. I don't get, like, I mean, I guess unless he knew and his lawyers knew that they were really innocent, like, so you know what I'm saying? Like, he, if he would have testified against his uncle, like, he would have, like, had a got a plea deal and potentially would have got way less time. But he was just kept going on the fact that whatever they off his co- like confession. The two speaking of his Brendan's confession, those two cops that interviewed him. How yeah. do you think those cops feel right now with everything that's been happening with these past few seasons? How do you think they actually feel? I don't know. I would imagine Especially if it does get overturned where Brendan eventually gets out. If I was in that situation, I was the cop that interviewed them. So unless you deep down inside knew you did your job and that's what you had to do, but now watching all these facts, like there's always two sides to the story. So you have to go from the cops point of view. Um I always say I'm, you know, kind of going to side, you know, uh, you kind of got to, you know, take law enforcement side. But looking back at it now, watching all that, I wouldn't be surprised if they resigned. For sure. If I if I was well, one of them to, did, didn't they? I have no idea. I don't know any of their names or anything. But I looking back so. at it, I wouldn't be surprised if they either resigned or took like a like a stupid desk job mm. or, or, you know, weren't out on the street interviewing people doing that kind of stuff like just because of all the heat of it and your face being out there. Right. But your thoughts on Ken Kratz. Oh, that the original prosecutor? Yeah. yeah. And that's still keeping his name in the spotlight and everything. Um, didn't yeah, he resigned for sure, but for Yeah, not because because, because case, he had some, other, some another case. Yeah. Uh he was sexting the, with uh like a, a domestic a, abuse victim. Yeah. I mean look up Ken Kratz and you'll find out everything. Yeah, I that guy I mean so let's let's take the the point of view from the city's point of view, Manitoba County, right? They're they're basically trying to save their little township city from that lawsuit from the first case against him. Um, 
Ken Kretz. Yeah, they 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 pretty much made like if this comes out like it was like a big setup. Like, damn, they did some crazy amount of stuff. Mm-hmm. But the thing that's always still getting me is uh, uh, what's her name? Holbach, the girl. Yeah, Teresa Holbach. Yeah, about her family. That that kind of sucks for them being dragged off. It, it, it does, and and the thing is too. If you watch the first episode where they interviewed Teresa's friends, mm-hmm. and especially that one college guy that's sitting on the bench like this in the park. Oh, yeah, The yeah. douchebag. I'm like, he's a douchebag. He just wanted to be on the series just well, be no, on the series, I would I imagine, think. didn't they say a lot of her, like, there was the one interview, it was, like, after the press conference mm-hmm. when uh, Brennan Dassey gets convicted. Her brother does the little news conference. He's like, I'm not going to think about any of them for 41 years because that's when he'll be up for parole. Till now and then, I'm just going to go live about yep. my life. Sure enough, two Netflix series come out with it. So there goes that idea. Uh, the thing is, it's like they say, the, the, her one college friend says, do we want the right com- person convicted? Yeah, but does it really matter? Teresa's dead. Yeah. But it does matter because if these two people are, are innocent, innocent yeah. the person that is still out there is still, still out I'm there. Trying, I would still look at at her boyfriend, Teresa's. Or that, oh, or that, that her ex boyfriend. Damn it, Adam! T- you need to watch it, man. So like, you need to watch. The I, rest I, of I don't. Shit. I haven't watched the series, but like, not like I don't know the statistics. It's a very high number. Like these domestic, uh, you know, disturbances or cases where like a girlfriend goes missing. Like, who do they look at first? The boyfriend or the love interest so or the I'm gonna, husband. I'm going to say three names to you. Well, I don't. Name. I don't know their names. Okay, but no, I, but I just, I, no, you'll know. It'd be Teresa's boyfriend. Mm-hmm. Brendan's brother, Bobby. Okay, yeah. And then Barbara's husband. I don't even know who Barbara is. Brendan's mom. Oh, yeah. I seen and that their episode. husband. I seen the one, the last episode, she just got she that new tattoo. She did not age well. <laughs> she got that new tattoo or something yeah. like that. Like, I was like, why are they talking about this right now? But all right, They cool. need some filler somehow with this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do they make a season three? I don't know. I haven't finished season two, so I couldn't answer that question. Good point. So once I finish it, maybe uh, if they need to be, but they're not out of jail yet, unless all of a sudden they get out of prison. Tomorrow morning, watch. We're going to see some news. Stephen Avery and Brenda Dessie are free. Right. Like, I mean, that, that, that could possibly if, if happen. Trump, if Trump wanted to score some brownie points with some, he can't. He <laughs> can't when. Oh, oh one, you? Yes, you can. It's not a federal case. Yeah, but there's like ways. Like, hey. Hey, let, let them out, and then all of a sudden, hey, look at this giant factory opens up in Manitowoc <laughs> County. Wow, what are the odds? Yeah, there's ways that can be done. Like, if Trump really wanted to score some brownie points, Trump, if you're listening, let Brandon Dassey out. I mean, if Trump's mm-hmm. listening to our podcast, give us a thumbs up and like I'm in the just, comments I'm just saying, below. like, because this all came out, when did the season come out? Or the first The one? first season came out two years ago. Oh, did it? Okay. It's Why been a it? while. It's been a while, and they weren't even ever planning on doing the second season. Yeah. And then they, people wanted to want you to know, see what's happening. Presidents pardon presidents all the time. That was the whole thing, like, for, like, a way worse crimes. Okay, but if <laughs> Trump pardons these two, he's got to look into other cases of pardon them, too, then. Oh, no, yeah, they can. People do that stuff all the time. They were People, uh, who is the governor that was in jail for Illinois just most recently? Um, Blagojevich? Yeah, Blagojevich. She was writing letters to Obama all the time to try getting him pardoned. And even the governor before that, he was right. trying to get out. People in, you know, you write letters to the presidents all the time to get people pardoned. It doesn't matter, like, and they do it by a case by case basis. Obviously, he's going to look into it, feel the facts. It, it, he's going to, he has to look into it, what's going to help his image. Yeah, right. Like, obviously, if he lets this guy out that shouldn't be out, oh, I look like an asshole. Now, <laughs> if he pardons somebody that's like, Wow, public opinion kind of likes this guy. Maybe this boosts some point. He's not. Most presidents don't pardon somebody because, you know, they like that person. Right. They're gonna look into it and hear that case out. For sure, agreed. Well, on that note, if you've watched the whole season two of Making a Murderer, sound off in the comments below. Let us know if you think Brendan Dassey or Stephen Avery are going to go. Like us on Facebook. Press that thumbs up. And we will comment from you out of nowhere. Follow on Instagram. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We have an Instagram, too. Follow us on Instagram. <laughs> Mike, just say it. You're behind the camera. What? Ring the bell. Ring the bell. <laughs> oh, yeah. Ring the bell and subscribe. That's right. Ring the bell and subscribe. Yeah, notifications. And like I said, if you like us. Have you ever been on Facebook or have you ever been on YouTube before? That? I've been on YouTube, dude. Yeah, I, have you ever been on YouTube? <laughs> this is what this platform's this going is what, Yeah, this is pla- this thing's going no, on we're YouTube. put this one on Vimeo. <laughs> I see video, Vimeo ads all the time on YouTube. Like when I'm on YouTube, it says Vimeo, yeah. Vimeo, Vimeo. But press the like button, comment uh, in the section below. Adam, Mike, and I will comment from out of nowhere. And we'll see you guys next time on Overdrive Reality Productions.